ahead and go to the book of Acts, to the fourth chapter, Acts chapter 4, and we'll continue on our uh, t- preaching through the book of Acts, and we're on Act 8, Act 8, and so Acts chapter 4 in your Bibles, we'll begin reading in verse number 32, we read 32 last week, and so uh, uh, we will we'll cover, recover a couple of those verses, recover uh, we're not recovering them. We're going back over them again. Uh, we're not trying to, to save those verses. We're not recovering them. It's not like they're lost files or anything. Uh, but we're going over those, uh, those verses again, and then we'll read into chapter 5 and down through verse number 16, and we'll stop there for this evening. And so, again, we're talking about, as we're talking about the Acts of the Apostles, uh, we're talking about each, kind of each act uh, as, a, as one big picture, not necessarily going verse by verse as much as one uh, story or one we might call act, and uh, as you might see in a play, something like that. And so we said act one, act two, act three. This is act eight tonight, and uh, so we'll begin here in verse number 32 of act chapter four. If you're able and willing to join me in standing, I'd ask you that you do that. I know you just uh, were standing a few minutes ago, and I appreciate that. Uh, Acts chapter 4, verse number 32, and as I mentioned, we'll read the rest of this chapter and then begin reading into chapter 5 and down through verse number 16. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul, neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great Grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the price of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas. Now we'll come back to him. We're not going to preach on him tonight. uh, But Barnabas. Uh, So Joseph, who was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite and, uh, uh, and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. It seems that he's set a precedent here. Now, uh, they had all things in common already, but now he says, all right, I I have a possession, I have a property, I'm going to sell it, and I'm going to bring it to the apostles' feet and say, you do what you will with it, what you believe the Lord wants you to do with it. And so lays it at the apostles' feet. That seems to set some kind of precedent uh, because in the next chapter you see others doing or pretending to do the same thing. Uh, Verse 1, but a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira his wife, sold a possession and kept back of the price his wife, uh, kept kept back of the price, part, I'm sorry, kept back part of the price, his wife's wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. (coughs) Excuse me, and Peter said, Ananias, why hast Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Whilst it remained, was it not thine own? And after, is it, after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou con, uh, conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost, and great fear came on all them that heard these things. I should say so. If something like that happened in our church, someone said, hey, I'm, uh, uh, I'm giving an offering and I I'm, and I'm, uh, had sold a, a, a piece of land and I sold it for $10,000 and uh, here is $10,000 and it was actually sold for $15,000 and, and uh, the preacher said, uh, um, uh, uh, why are you lying to the Holy Ghost? and called him out, and then he died right there, I think great fear would fall on us as well. Now, look, I, I'm going to talk about something tonight that, that is not, uh, that we don't see, that, that, that is a, 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 a phenomenon, if you will, that we don't see. But still, think about this. This is real people, just like you and I, and, and this happened in their congregation, in their midst. I'd say great fear fell, came upon all of them. I, I would be afraid too. And the young men arose, uh, let's see here, where did we leave off? Uh, um, 
Great fear. Verse five, verse six. And young men, and the young men arose, wound him up and carried him out and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. You know what's amazing to me about that? Not that his wife came three hours later, but they were still there three hours later. I mean, imagine church started at seven o'clock and imagine still being here at 10 o'clock. Some of y'all would, would just uh, croak. Uh, maybe not literally like, but anyway, I didn't even mean it that way. But anyway, verse eight, and Peter answered unto her, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, yea, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, how is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at that door and shall carry thee out. Then she fell down straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came in and found her dead and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch, and of the rest durst no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them, speaking magnifying of the, the, the apostles. And believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes both of men and women, insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets. Listen to this. And laid them on beds and couches that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and, and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed every one. Act 8, the title tonight is The Possession. The Possession. And uh, we'll preach on that thought tonight. Father in heaven, help us. Lord, I, I, uh, uh, I uh, resign to humility. Lord, I, I am nobody. I have nothing. All, all that I have. I am like Adam. I am just a dirt. Uh, but I have something in me. Lord, that is of great value as Adam, as you breathe into Adam uh, the breath of life, your breath, Lord, you've given me a spirit, your spirit, Lord, and I have nothing in my flesh that's uh, valuable. But Lord, you've, uh, you've given me the word of God and the spirit of God, and I pray that you'd fill me with your spirit and you'd use me. Lord, uh, take something that is invaluable and, uh, and, and make much of the most valuable thing that we have, the word of God and uh, pointing to Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord, I pray. Fill me with your spirit. Fill each hearer with your spirit. And I pray it all in Jesus Christ's name. Uh, amen. The, the possession is the title tonight, and, and we could go uh, different ways. When I, say, when I mention the possession in regard to our text, uh, we could preach on the possession of the multitude of them that believed. And look at Acts chapter 5 and verse number uh, uh, 32. Um, I'm sorry, Acts chapter 4, verse number 32. It says, um, where am I at here? Verse 32. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that ought of the things that, uh, which he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. And, and I, I said we're preaching on the possession, not the possession. So I'm not preaching on that. I didn't say possessions. The things that, they, that these believers relinquished and had in common for the distribution of the saints. I said possession, singular uh, what did these what did these believers possess? Well, they possessed, as we look uh, in verse number thirty two they possessed great i 'm sorry uh, uh, verse thirty three and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. What did they possess? They possessed a great grace. When we think about grace, we often think about the unmerited favor by which we receive salvation. But I might point out that it is the same grace, the same unmerited favor that provides salvation also allows us to be a witness. Here, the, the, these, uh, the uh, uh, apostles were a great witness. It allows us to sacrifice. And that's what these people were doing. They, they were sacrificing what they had and they were giving it to others, having all things in common. How could you 
Get to the place where you are willing to give what you have up to others. The grace of God. A great grace. A a, a great ability. How about to be selfless? Uh, That is a great grace that allows you to do that. Uh, Many times we look at the things of God, that the things that God's commanded us to do or or directed us to to do through the word of God, and we say, I couldn't do that. Well, no, you couldn't do that in your own power, but the grace of God allows you to do that. It's uh, the, the power of God. It's the, the ability to do uh, something. And so to be selfless, uh, uh, many people say, well, I couldn't uh, uh, love someone else. To love others. Think about the second greatest commandment. We're to love God and we're to love our neighbors. What's it say? Love our neighbor as? Well, I think when you s- give, give your possessions up for others, that's the very idea, the very definition of loving others. If everything that I have, I give to, to other people, they were, they were uh, 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 obeying. They were, they were living out the second greatest commandment by giving things to others, by loving their neighbors more than themselves. And so uh, we see that it, it takes great grace to do this. And that's what they were doing. They were, they were loving others, the second great commandment. Uh, uh, but that is not the possession on which we'll focus tonight. We could focus on the possession of greed. What I mean by that is greed's possession. Greed possessed Ananias and Sapphira. As we look at this passage, we could focus, when I say the possession, I could say we could look at greed's possession. Ananias and Sapphira were greedy. Greed possessed them. Somehow they missed out on the possession of the great grace and were possessed themselves by grace's competitor, greed. Now think about that. Grace and greed are competitors. You drive down the road and you see a Walgreens. Right across the street, what do you see? Everybody knows. There's a CVS across the street from every Walgreens and vice versa. They're competitors. The competitor of grace, listen, is greed. Where... uh, Uh, It's a great contrast. Grace says that you have gotten more than you deserve, while greed says you haven't gotten all that you deserve. Think about that. Grace says, hey, you've gotten way more than you deserve. We'll give you more. Greed says, I haven't got half of what I deserve. I deserve far more. I I think uh, uh, there was, I think about the the greed that possessed Ananias and Spire. This is an amazing story to me. Ananias and Sapphira, they, they have a piece of land. And as you look through this passage, there's no command. In fact, Peter even makes the comment, hey, while the land was yours, you could have done whatever you want with it. And when you sold it, you had the money, you could do whatever you wanted with the money. There's no command for them to sell their land. There is no command for them to give all the... Even the idea is say, well, uh, is, is, uh, should we sell everything we have and, and give it to others? Peter himself was not encouraging that. You see, you see, Barnabas does that, but Barnabas goes to the mission field. Barnabas begins to travel, and there are some things that, you know, the Jordans have given up everything here in the United States. They moved to the Dominican. That's what God's called them to do, but sometimes we see something, someone like that. We see someone stand up here and give a presentation. They sing and we say, I've got to be just like that. And I want people to look at me like uh, they look at him. And maybe that's what Ananias and Sapphira were saying. Oh, Barnabas, consolation. Uh, look at everyone uh, uh, patting him on the back. Look at uh, him on the platform. And, 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 and Paul, Peter, not Paul, eventually Paul, but at the time Peter and John and the other apostles, uh, they're talking about, uh, uh, they're talking about uh, Joseph. They're talking about uh, Barn- uh, uh, Barnabas. And what a great man he is. Let's sell. Let's do the same thing. I don't know if that was the motivation. I don't know. But they were, again, they were held by greed and not by grace. Uh, they didn't have to sell the property. They, they didn't have to give all of it up. Had they sold it for 50, I, mean, I don't know, the, there's no money uh, numbers given here. I'm just choosing numbers to help us, un, uh, un, just give us an idea. I have no idea if they kept half. I have no, I have no idea what they kept. But let's say they sold it for 15,000 and they'd come and they said, you know, we sold land for 15,000. We want to give 10,000 here to the apostles. 
my opinion, it doesn't say this, we're kind of, uh, 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 we're, we're kind of, uh, you know, the butterfly effect. What would have happened had that, well, that didn't happen, so we don't know what would have happened. But in my opinion, since you asked me, uh, um, is I don't think there would have been anything wrong with that. Peter himself said, hey, while it was yours, you could have done with it what you wanted. And, and when you sold it, it was yours. You didn't have to give it all up. Well, the problem was they lied. They said, we sold it for 10000 I don't know what number, but $10,000. And here is $10,000. We've given it all up. Well, they still had five grand in a safety, safety deposit box at the First Bank of Jerusalem. They still had it. They still had, they didn't have, they didn't, well, is that, a, is that a problem? Should they have not? No, that's, I don't think there was any problem with them giving only part. I, I don't see any, when I read this passage, I don't think there was any problem at all of them only giving part. The problem is they lied about it. The problem is they, they wanted everyone to think about them, how great they were. Look what Barnabas did. Again, I don't know that that's the motivation, but it's interesting that that's mentioned right before that. Barnabas gives everything, and so they come and they say, we're giving everything. And Peter said, no, you didn't give everything. And we could talk about the, the possession of greed. We could talk at the, about the contrast of the, the possession of grace and the possession of greed. While grace says that you can do more for the Lord, greed says the Lord can do more for you. Be careful, and we're going to get into something here in a little bit in regard to signs and wonders. Many times, those that focus on signs and wonders and believe that they have those today are possessed by this very uh, uh, object, greed. Many of them are making decisions based on how they can make money. It's for their own good. Again, this idea of greed. We're going to get to signs and wonders. And, and I'll explain and let, just give you so you don't uh, have to worry. Uh, let not your heart be troubled. I don't believe that signs and wonders are something that uh, are, uh, in, should, are in existence today, at least in regard to the way that the apostles were then. I believe there will be a day when uh, the Lord will use them, but he's not using them through us. I'm not, I don't believe in, 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 though I believe in miracles and I believe in healing, I don't believe in them in the same way that the, the apostles did them. Everybody understand me. And as soon as I say I believe in miracles and I believe in healing, um, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh, pastor's gone, uh, gone uh, uh, down a, 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 a strange road. No, I'm just saying that I believe that God still works miracles. I, I don't think that he works them in the same way that he worked them through the apostles. But listen, I'm thankful that, that God saved me. That's a miracle. Amen? And there's things I believe God can still work, but it doesn't work the same way he worked through the apostles. I believe that God still heals. The Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I believe that God heals. And that's, look, in, in a few moments we'll take out the prayer list and we'll start, why are we praying if we don't believe in healing? Why are we praying for someone to be healed? Again, I don't think that I'm going to come down and slap somebody in the forehead and they're going to be healed. I might. This front row looks fun to practice on, though. <laughs> anyway, we won't do that. <laughs> um, I don't believe that, but I, I do believe that God does heal. He still works. But I don't believe the doctor's word is the final word. I believe that God heals or we wouldn't pray. Or we wouldn't say, hey, pastor, pray for my, for my brother, pray for my mother, pray for my son. Uh, what are we praying for? We're praying for healing. It's not the same thing and, 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 that the apostles did, but it's, I believe still, God still heals. And Man, I'm getting way ahead of myself. What I'm saying is those that focus often on the signs and wonders are possessed by greed often. When grace says you can do more for the Lord, greed says the Lord can do more for you. While grace says that what I can do for, uh, sh shows what I can do for my neighbor. Greed says, what can my neighbor do for me? Well, grace is looking for a place to serve. Greed is looking for a place to be served. While grace is motivating you to look for something that you can do for someone else, greed is motivating you to look for something someone else can do for you. And the, the, these believers had great 
grace. Ananias and Sapphira had great greed. We see that greed had Ananias and Sapphira. But that's not the possession on which we'll focus tonight. Tonight we'll focus on the result of the great power that the apostles possessed. The possession that caused great fear to come upon all the church. Look at verse number 11. And great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. That possession that the apostles had was signs and wonders. Look at verse number 12. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. There was a possession. Now, as I read this passage, certainly the story of Ananias and Sapphira jumps, uh, uh, it gets your attention. But as I read this passage, I said, wow. Now, I, I, I never want to say, well, I wish I lived in this day, or I wish I lived in this day, or I wish I had that. Just be thankful for where, I want to try to just be thankful for where God's put me and, and the place he's put me and, and, and what I have. Uh, but sometimes I just wish that I could go back for a little bit and see these things. I mean, can you imagine being in the church? Can you imagine it, it being missions conference? And we're going to change the way we do our offering. And so uh, uh, we're going to just do one-time offerings for missions conference. And whatever you put on the commitment card, you're going to, you're going to give. And so, uh, 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 brother, let's go just pick Micah. Brother Micah picks, uh, he's going to give for this year, he's going to give $20,000 to missions. Thank you, Micah. That, the Lord appreciates that. And he comes down. And uh, uh, now he only knows what he's promised the Lord. And he says, all right, here's my $15,000. And the preacher said, and I say, wait a minute, that's not what you promised the Lord. That's not what you promised the Lord. And now, I've looked through this passage and read it many times. Peter doesn't say, you're going to die. Peter didn't kill him. The, go- the, 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 the Bible talks about the ghost leaving him, meaning God took his life out of the, his body, and he fell over. Imagine being here and everybody bringing their gifts, and that's where they did it. Imagine being here and, and the preacher standing here and people. Imagine being in that room, and Ananias comes and he says, well, we sold our property for $10,000, or whatever, dramas, Roman coins, whatever it is. 10000 And Peter said, why are you lying to the Holy Spirit, to the Holy Ghost? Look, we're we're good. Remember what I preached on Sunday morning about having the facade, the spiritual facade? We do that often. We we want people to think well of us. Sometimes we just show up for church just so, you know, I want to make sure people think that I'm spiritual because if I miss church... Uh, but, but because we don't listen to the preaching, we don't participate in the preaching, we don't participate in praising the Lord, uh, we don't make any decision, we're, we're, we're hearers of the word and we're not doers only, really, and I'm not saying that we shouldn't be at church, but really, what was the point of being at church? I mean, we just went through the motions. And what we've done is we've tried to lie to everybody there. We, we're just trying to fake everybody out. And... Peter calls him out. Imagine if the, if, if the preacher called you out and said, hey, stop lying to people. Stop, stop acting like you're spiritual when you're really not. And he said, why, why, did you, why are you lying to the Holy Ghost? This is an amazing gift. I can't, I don't know that. Look, when, when we give our, I'm just using missions because we make a commitment, when you give your, uh, your missions <coughs> commitment cards, there's no name on it. I don't know who gives what. I don't know. Imagine on Sunday, say, I saw your offering. It wasn't what you promised. You say, well, I didn't know. Uh, I don't know how. Uh, I didn't put my name on it. How did you know? You lie to the Holy Ghost. And somebody falls dead. Imagine that. <laughs> That's the signs and wonders. That's what's going on. And and, and again, I I don't wish to be anywhere else another time, but man, it it would have been, I'm not trying to be sadistic and say I wanted to see, I want to see somebody die, but I'm, I'm talking about this is something that is amazing to see. And so they possessed 
signs and wonders. Now, there's a precedent for signs and wonders, and we don't have a lot of time tonight, but uh, it, let's do this. Let's go back to Deuteronomy. There's several passages we could go to. Let's just look at one. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Now, let me, before I go any further, I'm going to talk about signs and wonders. I like to try to differentiate, because the Word of God differentiates, between a miracle and a miracle or something done that is a sign and wonder. Okay, so there are miracles that are done in Scripture, but that are not necessarily a sign. What's a sign? Well, it's very easy, a very simple definition of a sign. I'm driving along, and there's this octagonal red thing. It has four letters on it. It's a stop sign. It means what? Stop. Where? Right there. That's very simple. You're driving down the highway, and there's a billboard, and we call that a sign. And what's it saying? He says, next exit, or in 47,000 miles, is Merrimack Caverns. You ever see, how many's ever seen a Merrimack Cavern sign? Okay, I, I didn't know there was that many around. I wasn't sure. If you've ever seen a Merrimack Cavern sign, you know you're somewhere in the Midwest. Because there's a lot of them, in a lot of places. <laughs> Fewer than there used to be, a lot more. Anyway. What's it saying? Hey, this is right here. It's pointing out this is what you're to do or this is what is here. A sign is a miracle that is used to say, hey, this is something of significance. Specifically a sign and a wonder. It's a wonder is not wonder, or I mean wonder, but wonder. Like, oh, wow. Wow. Miracles that are used specifically for signs and wonders to say, hey, right here is something. It's it, stop sign right here. There's something right here. And, and so that's what a sign is. De Deuteronomy chapter 6. And let me go back to my notes and find out what uh, uh, verse 22. Verse 22. We could go back in, in this. He's talking about coming out of Egypt. Verse 21 uh, then thou shalt say unto thy, he's uh, retelling the story. Uh, uh, this is what you're supposed to tell to your, your son and, and, and what happened. And verse 22, and the Lord showed signs and wonders great and sore upon Egypt, upon Pharaoh and upon all his household before our eyes. For 400 years, there had not been anything said or done. And they, they worshiped Jehovah God. They worshiped the God of Abraham. They worshiped the God of Isaac. They worshiped the God of Jacob. But for 400 years, there hadn't been anything of significance as they were enslaved in Egypt. And now God brings signs and wonders. We call them the plagues. There's 10 of them. And they were used to bring uh, attention, uh, almost like a marquee, uh, uh, like an arrow. Hey, right here, there's something of si significance here. That's what those, that was the, this passage right here is the first time we see that phrase together, signs and wonders. It's not just, there are times where there are miracles, but there are miracles that are signs and wonders. And God allowed, this is the first time God allowed the apostles to have signs and wonders. Uh, that's the, the precedent is back in the book of Deuteronomy or back in the book of Exodus. Deuteronomy is the retelling of it. And to say, hey, God is for you and God will bring you out of Egypt and God is powerful and, and God will take care of you. Those signs and wonders were to show Egypt and Israel all of those things. Now, imagine having heard all of those things. Those, imagine having heard someone tell you about all 10 of those plagues and you not believing God. Imagine reading about them and not believing him. That's what happens today. Those signs and wonders are to point out that God is real, that God, is, that God can work, that God can uh, uh, do what he says and work on their behalf. It was, uh, certainly we understand those, those uh, plagues, uh, uh, as he told Moses, were to 
uh, um, to uh, 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 spoil Egypt. They, they were to, to punish Egypt, certainly. But they were signs and wonders for both Egypt and Israel to show, hey, this is the God. This is, this is a marquee showing this is the God. This is God. Uh, so very quickly, uh, uh, the, pr- the precedent. We, then we see the purpose. What's the purpose? Now, this is the one I'd like to spend the most time on. Go to the book of Hebrews, and I'm going to try to do this as quickly as possible. What's the purpose of signs and wonders? Why did God give them? Hebrews chapter 1, verse number 1, God who at sundry times, uh, sundry means different times, uh, 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 at different times and in diverse manners, different ways, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. So he gave the prophets. Uh, Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son. Who's that? Jesus. So he said, hey, God came to us and he spoke to us by his prophets. What's the name of the book that we're reading? Hebrews. Who's he writing to? Hebrews. He's saying, hey, do you, you, you believe all the prophets. You believe God came and spoke to the prophets. Now he's sent us his son. And he's speaking to us through his son. And then throughout the rest uh, of uh, chapter 1, he's talking about how that he chose his son. By the way, uh, take someone who does not believe in the the, uh, uh, the divinity of Jesus Christ, that Jesus is God. Take him to Hebrews chapter 1 and just show him how that uh, he, here's, he's not man. He's, remember, man's made lower than the angels. In this passage, Jesus is made above the angels. And you say, Jesus is made as a man he was, he, but he's higher than the angels. And so it talks about, uh, it talks about uh, the angels. It talks about uh, where God is, is at, on, or Jesus is at on the right hand. Now go to chapter 2. Therefore, because all of these reasons that we just talked about in chapter 1, that I, I wish we could go verse by verse, we just don't have time. Therefore, for all the reasons that we just stated, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. What did we hear? We've heard from the prophets, and now we've heard from his son, Jesus Christ. So we need to give a, a, a earnest heed to, to what we've heard by the prophets and his son, Jesus Christ lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression, transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape? So, so they're saying, hey, if angels spoke and we believe them and what they said came to, to pass, then how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord? So, so if, if we believe the angels... And, and what they said came to fruition, then how much more so when the Lord speaks, when the, the Son of God, when God himself speaks through his Son, why don't we believe him? Then it says, how shall we escape? We, we're not going to escape if the Lord speaks to us. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to, to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? Who are they that heard him, that confirmed? Apostles. The apostles were the ones that told others, hey, Jesus, did anyone, has anyone here audibly heard Jesus say, uh, um, I am the way, the truth, and life. No man cometh unto the Father by, but by me. Anyone here? No one's actually heard that with your ears. I'm thankful that no one raised their hands because I didn't know, I'm not sure what I would have done. If someone raised their hands, you weren't around. I, weren't, I wasn't around. But do you believe that he said that? Because someone heard him, and then that person wrote it down, and he gave it to someone else, and that person wrote it down, gave it to someone else, gave it to someone else, gave it to someone else, that, that I have it in my, I have it right here now. I have his words. Someone heard him and wrote it down. And that's what he's saying right here. He said, um, and Jesus other than writing in the dirt, we don't really know of Jesus writing much of anything. But he says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at first began to be spoken of by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him, these apostles. These apostles. How do you know that they heard him? How do you know that they're, they're telling the truth? How do you know that, that, that what they're saying is true? How do you know that they're saying that Jesus is God? That seems unbelievable. How do we know that? Look what it says, verse 4. 
God also bearing them. Who's them? The apostles. They are the ones that bore witness of what Jesus said. God also bearing them witness both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. How do we escape this great salvation that God, the Lord spoke to us about and then we heard others confirm it and God gave them a witness. God gave them a marquee. God gave them a billboard, if you will, to say, this is Jesus. He is God. He gave them signs and wonders. Now, who did he give them to? He gave them to them who heard him. All right, I asked before, has anyone heard Jesus Christ? Reasonably, because I know there, are people, but people, there will be someone who would raise their hand, I'm sure. I talked to a man the other day, and uh, he said, he said, if time travel existed, no, 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 time travel exists. If time travel were uh, readily accessible, I said, okay, okay. <laughs> Literal, and that's what he said. He said that to me. All right, okay. So I'm sure someone would say something like this. But <laughs> do you know anyone that, re- I mean, it's, being honest, that actually heard Jesus Christ say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. No one knows anyone like that. They don't, they're not alive today. Only those that heard him had these signs and wonders. He gave them these signs and wonders to be a sign to say, hey, he said it, and he is God. Jesus is God. That was the purpose And I just covered about four points right there. Uh, We could talk about the persons of the signs and wonders. That's the apostles. We see that in this verse. And and in fact, let's go back to Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. And the rest, so let's look at verse 12. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders. Now, it's not by all these other people. It was by the, the apostles. By the hands of the apostles were many signs. Remember, what's an apostle? We have to go back to chapter 1. Remember when they were choosing the 12th apostle to replace Judas? What was the requirement? You had to have been with Jesus. That, that, was the, that was the requirement. You had to have been there the whole time. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And of the rest durst no man join himself to them. What does that mean? What does that mean? That no one durst join themselves to him. That means that that was the end of the apostles. There was no more added. Now, there was one more added, miraculously by God. In fact, he was the least of the apostles. Born out of due time. Right? Saul the apostle Paul. But at the, there's no more, at, other than, I mean, there was no one else that a light came and knocked them off the, their horse and said, you know, called them by name and said, why kick, kick us out against the pricks? No one else is the apostle Paul. And so this, what this saying is that there's nobody joining them. There's no one else doing miracles, signs and wonders, except for these men. And so we see the persons, then we see the power. And I wish we could go into this. We don't have time, but Knowledge. Peter said, why are you lying? How did he know that? Signs and wonders. Healing. So much so that people wanted the shadow of Peter. Now, now listen, I'm not saying uh, uh, that was never said even of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not saying that that didn't happen to Jesus Christ. It, it could have happened, but it's not recorded. It's not stated even of Jesus Christ. That the shadow of Peter, that means they had someone sick and they're just trying, remember the the lady that touched Jesus to be healed, they they weren't even trying to touch Peter, they just wanted the shadow to, to pass over them. 
hoping for healing. What power of signs and wonders that they had to, to cast out unclean uh, spirits and, and to, uh, 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 to uh, have knowledge and healing and amazing things that were going on. And then uh, the passing of signs. And that's what we'll close with, the, the passing of signs. You say, are you talking about the passing of signs and wonders to, to someone else? No, 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 I'm saying the passing uh, as in the passing away of signs and wonders. Now, the Apostle Paul didn't tell Timothy or Titus that they needed to do signs and wonders. Did you notice that? Did you notice that there's no command later on to do signs and wonders? Th there is no command. To pray for healing? Absolutely. Uh, um, but there's no command, th there's no continuation. There are not apostles alive today that are doing signs and wonders. I can promise you this. If there are people who claim to be apostles trying to do signs and wonders, greed has them. I mean, I, 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 um, it's hard to paint with a, a broad brush all the time, but almost every time you hear about someone uh, um, that's claiming to be an apostle, that's claiming to have the ability to do signs and wonders, they don't possess grace. They're possessed by greed. That's why they're selling hankies or, nap or napkins. And they're, 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 it's, they're possessed by greed more often than not. And, and I guess there could be someone who is uh, so foolish to think that they can do that. They haven't read their Bible and they're not possessed by greed. But the, the, the vast majority are so what are we to do? What are we supposed to do? If we're not commanded to do signs and wonders, uh, very quickly, one last place, and we'll be done. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I know we've preached on, through 1 Corinthians, but let's go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. This is what, this is what the Apostle Paul did for the Corinthians. Corinthians, by and large, were Gentile. They were not Jews. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number, let's start in verse number 22. We've preached these verses. It's been a little while, but uh, let's look at um, verse 21. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. By the way, though what I'm doing from the pulpit is preaching, every one of us in here can preach. Now, I'm, talking, I'm, talk, I'm not talking about from a pulpit. Preaching just means to declare. It just means to tell someone else something. And God has chosen to use preaching to save people. Notice what it says. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God. That's, it was God's pleasure by the foolishness of preaching to save them that, that believe. How many think that it might be more productive if I could do some kind of miracle show up here tonight? Yeah. I mean, it might seem more productive. That's not God's pleasure. God has chosen. It pleased him to choose the foolishness of preaching, declaring Jesus Christ. Verse 22, for the Jews require a what? A sign. Right here, this is him. They missed it. Many did. Sir, I say they, Peter, James, John, Bartholomew, so forth, all, but they didn't miss it. And thousands and thousands didn't, but many have. There's people, there, there are those that are still searching, searching seeking a sign. The, the Jews require a sign. Greeks seek after wisdom. There are those that still want to reason things out. I just don't think that, I think the foolishness of preaching, declaring Jesus Christ. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. What should we do today, pastor? Should we pray for signs and wonders? No, the apostles had that. 
What do we need to do today? We just need to preach. By the way, we possess the same Spirit of God that allows us and gives us the grace to preach that they possessed that gave them the ability to do signs and wonders. The Spirit of God isn't any less strong. He's not any weaker. The command is just different. We have the, the, we are, the, the, we should be possessed by the Spirit of God, not we possessing the Spirit of God. We should be filled and, and possessed by the Spirit of God that we could preach the Word of God. That's what God desires of us. Let's not try to trick people or trap people or, or, or reason through people or, or, or look for some kind of sign and wonder. Let's just preach, tell people about Jesus Christ. That's what God desires. That's God's pleasure that we preach the Word of God. Father in heaven, help us, Lord, I pray, to be obedient to the Word of God. Help us to uh, 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 preach the Word of God to uh, the lost. Lord, preach the, the, the Jesus Christ to the lost. Preach the Word. Help us be instant, in season, out of season. Help us to know the Word of God and to, and to, to preach it, Lord, we pray. And we ask it all in Jesus Christ's name. For his sake, we pray it. Amen.